Now we've got the player to select rock, paper, scissors, we need to get the computer to do the same. The computer will have to first of all choose a random number and then base that number we're going to help it select rock, paper, scissors. So if the computer rolls a 1, then that's going to be rock. If it rolls a 2, that's going to be paper. If it rolls 3, that's scissors. You can think of it like rolling a dice. So it's going to roll a dice and depending on the number on the dice depends on what we're going to select. So first of all, I'm going to put a variable called number, and I'm going to make that equal math dot get random number. So I'm just going to bring back that um, message box. So what get random number does is it gets a random number between one and the specified maximum number. So because I want a number between one and three, I'm going to put three as the parameter. So what this will do is it will use the math object and get a random number between 1 and 3 and then store that into the variable called number. So remember uh, last time we looked at variables and we looked at the idea that it, will can, it can store a value and it's stored somewhere in the computer uh, so we can use it later. And then just to show you what's happening I'm going to do a text window and just simply write out the number. And let's see what's going on. I'm going to press run. I'm going to make a choice. Paper. I've selected paper and it's printed out one. So I can run it again and do the same. I can choose paper again. And it's chosen one again. Let's run it again. And this time it's chosen two. So every time I run it, it's going to choose a different number. It could choose the same number again. It could choose a different number. It's always going to choose a random number. The math object allows us to access special maths functions. Okay? On the right hand side, you can see a list of all the maths functions it does. Now some of these you might look at and go, I have no idea what that means. But some of you might. For example, max will gi give you a maximum number, min will give you a minimum number, um, and you might also uh, know power, which will raise uh, an one number to another number by power. Now that I've got um, the random number, I need to do something a bit more exciting with it than just simply display it. Remember I wanted to say, if the number was 1, then the computer is going to be choosing rock. If it's 2, paper, or 3 scissors. To do this, I'm going to use an if statement. So I'm going to say if number equals 1, then make computer equal rock and then end if. So what this does <coughs> is say if the number is 1, so if the random number is 1 that's been selected then the computer has actually really selected rock. I can do this again. If the number equals 2 then our computer variable is actually going to be paper. So my computer variable is simply uh, storing the actual selection for the computer. So rather than store it as a number, it's going to display it as text, or just store it as text. I'm just going to finish this off, so if number equals 3, then computer equals scissors and end if. Now your if statement should always end with an end if so it should be if the thing you're testing followed by the word then then inside it you can see it's tabbed in slightly to show it is inside the if statement um, it will then run that bit of code and then end if basically ends it. So the way it works is quite straightforward it will do this test. So if number is equal 1, it's going to run the code inside it. If it's not, it will ignore it and just jump on. So let's see this in action. I'm going to, at the end, just to show you how this works, put text window dot right line, and I'm going to do something along the lines of the computer selected plus computer.
Okay, I'm going to run that. So I'm going to make a choice. Paper. I've selected paper, and you can see it there says the computer selected scissors. So I'm going to run it again. I'm going to choose paper again. So I've chosen paper, computer's chosen scissors, so it's beat me twice. Paper again. I chose the scissors again. I'm hoping for it to choose something different. There it goes. I selected paper, and the computer selected paper. Okay, it is random, so I had no way of predicting which order it's going to run. But as you can see, these if statements basically turn the number, the random number that was selected, into a bit of text which you can then uh, display on the screen, but also um, use in our program for later.